Hey guys, so I'm Cassie, and today we're going to learn how to make my blocks in EV3, okay? So here, I have a super simple uh, line follower program. Uh, it's like the most basic one that you can make. And we're going to make a my block out of it. So a my block is where I can take this entire program that's highlighted, okay? And I can turn it into just one block, kind of like this. So this could be a line follower program, okay? And my blocks are found right here. See, my blocks are found right there. Right now I don't have any, but we're going to change that, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to highlight it, but you don't want to highlight the play button. Everything else, okay? Tools, ah, tools, my block builder, okay? So, you see, this is where we get to actually make the my block. So we can change what this main icon is here. So we're going to get a cool color sensor one, because that makes sense. We're going to call it line underscore follower because you're not allowed to have spaces, see? And then it yells at you and you don't want EV3 to yell at you. Um, and then we're going to set some parameters, okay? So those are these things right here. So you can just keep clicking and clicking, but we, we don't want that many. We only want two, okay? And these are where you can input things like this, how over here we have a negative 20 for our direction or 50 for our power. So it's that same exact thing, okay? And we're going to want two of them. One of them is for our time, and one of them is going to be for this here, okay? So, we can go in here, parameter setup, we're going to do time first. Nope. Time, there we go. Uh, we can make a cool, we can pick a cool icon, let's see, which one do we like? You want to make sure that it relates to what your actual, um, to what the parameter is going to do, because otherwise you just have a whole bunch of random icons and you don't know what they mean. So. That's bad. And then this one, set up, we're going to call it reflect percentage. Oh no. Reflect percentage. Okay. And that's going to be, let's see, that's a cool one that makes sense with this. Doo -doo -doo. That looks good. Okay. So those are going to be our two parameters. So you see that's pretty simple. Over here we just pick an icon. Okay. We name it. You can add a description if you want. You add some parameters if you want them. Fill out this. You can also change it so it's like a slidey, vertical, horizontal. Or you can just make it a number, which is what I have. So you can have different things there. You can make as many of these as you want, and then you hit finish. Okay, so that wasn't that hard, right? So now, you might you might not have noticed, but this was what I had before. So this was the... This was the pr the program I was in before, and this is the program that it made for my for my my block. Okay, so you notice this part right here, like this general area. Okay, that used to be what was over here, right? But now that's all condensed into just one block. So, boop, there we go. So all of that is condensed into just one block with two values. Okay, so if we go over here. This is where your parameters, so time and the reflect percentage, this is what they're going to do, okay? So the time one is going to change the time for the loop, so how long the loop goes. And the reflect percentage is going to change this over here, okay? So you want to make sure that you connect those. You can put this to the side, you can put it over here, you can do whatever you want with it. I just think to the side is pretty cool for this one. So you're going to leave it over to the side, and you can connect them into there. You can have more of these if you want to. It doesn't make a difference. So now we can change this to a four second line follower where we want to ask the question. Because remember, a switch asks a question if, and if you don't know which symbol this is, it's less than, so you can go like that. If there's less than 25% of the light being reflected back. Okay. So that's everything that I think I'm going to need to change in my line follower program. If I find out that I need to change something, I can click edit, and it pops this back up again. So don't worry. When you're doing this, this isn't final. You can always change them. And then you can see if I open up a new program, it's right here. See? Ooh. So now that's always going to be available for you down here. Okay. And if you want to get rid of a my block, 
So I just made this cool my block, but now I don't need it anymore. We're gonna get rid of it. Okay. Gonna click up here, project properties. It's where the little like wrench is, double-sided wrench. And usually it opens up to here. And then you're gonna click on my blocks right up here. Boop. Click on line follower or whichever one yours is. You're gonna click on it, and you're gonna hit delete. Okay. Boop. So now if you notice that if you look up here, that program just disappeared. Okay. And now this is all confused because there's no my block that it's connected to and it's sad. So we gotta get rid of that because that program won't work. So now, so that's how you make my blocks. You go up here, you take whatever you want to be made into a my block. It doesn't matter what it is. Highlight it, everything except the play button. Uh, tools, tools, thank you. My block builder, put in all the information. And then a my block will pop up right here that you can use. And it will be a combination of all of the blocks that you highlighted. Okay. And you can always put in parameters if you know you're going to want to change something, just like a regular block, how you can change the speed, um, the port, you can change the rotations, whether it's break or coast. So you can make parameters for that too. Delete it by going up into here, my, bl my blocks, click on it, and then hit delete. Okay. So I hope you guys have a super awesome day, and I can't wait to teach you guys more about programming. See ya!